Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, where is the best place to learn about Canadian finance. So previously, I've made a couple of videos on the channel talking about the Canadian housing market. And it's been a new month, so I thought I'd make a new video and update everyone. So in this video, there will be three parts. Number one is the misconception or questions I see over and over again. And then number two, the two different forces that are pushing the market either up or down and talk about where are we heading right now and make sure you stay until the end for the third part where i'll talk about a hidden trend online right now that maybe some people have overlooked or not paying attention to and that might signal as what's about to come in the real estate market so let's get started for the new canadian housing market update All right, so let's go over some misconception or questions I see. The first one is actually directed at me. I've seen comments saying that, hey, your last two video, you're talking about housing bubble. You're saying the market could go down. You just want it to go down because you don't have real estate yourself. And that's why you're making all these videos about this. So first of all, I do have properties in Vancouver. So for my personal best interest, I would want to see house prices to go up and rent to go up. However, this is not what this channel is about. It's not about telling you what I want to see personally, but telling you what I am seeing in the market. So my audience who are watching the videos can make a more well-informed and educated decision for their own finances. Now, second misconception I see for the real estate market is a lot of people were saying crash is going to happen very quick and instantaneous. And also it's going to impact every price point in the real estate market. This is actually not true and we can look at it from different angles. So first of all, let's look at how real estate market is structured. Real estate market is made up more like a tier list of different price range. Now it's shaped more like a triangle because at the top there will be a lot less demand and also supply. Whereas at the bottom, it's very affordable. So there will be many people building it and also many people looking into it maybe as an entry home price. So given this shape, if housing market is going to do a correction, very likely we'll often see first correction come from the top first. And as I will show you later in the video, that's exactly what's going on in the market right now. So theoretically, if a correction was to happen, what will happen is price correction is gonna happen at the very top first, bringing the average price down. Now, once the average price goes down, What's going to happen is people at the second tier who is on the fence of maybe buying a first tier house, but maybe, maybe they're just out of range before. Now they're more attracted to jump to tier one. So there will be some demand moving over to tier one to pick up those cheaper units. And once that happens, that would leave second tier with less demand and thus bringing the dip price down. Then that will leave third tier to jump up to second tier and so on and so forth. In theory, that's how a market correction will happen. Now, with this in mind, this means correction usually would take a long time to happen because of something called imperfect information. Buyers actually don't have all the information at all times. So the whole process of realizing price have changed and they're moving to a different tier, it's gonna take months to happen. And usually that's what a real estate market looks like. If you look at 2019 where the real estate market slowed down, that's exactly what happens. The only time this can speed up if it's something like 2008 happened where maybe five banks overnight announced that they have difficulties to staying liquid, that's going to induce a lot of fear into buyer and seller and will immediately bring the housing market down. But that's a very, very rare event and you should not be banking on something like that happening. Now, another misconception to make about this is in the pyramid tier list, there is no one big demand and supply curve that will determine the price point at every single tier. Instead, at every single tier, there is its own demand and supply curve that will determine its own equilibrium price. And why is this important? Well, that's because if that's the case, then our theory we just talked about where every tier is going to move up and thus there's a price change across every single tier may not necessarily happen if there is an oversaturated demand or 
very, very little supply existing in a certain tier. So the price correction might have stopped at that tier because even though some people are moving away, there is still enough demand or not enough supply for the price to really shift. So you might still have a very hot market at a certain tier where people are still fighting over all the remaining inventories. So what that means is while it's useful to look at the overall trend of the housing market, you also need to look at specifically your area to see if the same trend is applicable or not. Now the last misconception I see from a lot of comments are saying that, hey, if A happens, then a crash or a market boost must happen. So for example, they're saying like, if CRB are ending, a uh, market is going to crash for sure. Or if low interest rate market is going to go up for sure. They're making these one-to-one -one cost and effect statements. And that's also not true. A better way to think about the real estate market is that at the end of the day, there's still a demand and a supply curve at every single tier, like I just said but everything that's happening in the economy or uh, policies that are pushing out by the government right now are simply forces that are going to push either the demand curve or the supply curve left or right so we really need to see which force is pushing harder for us to really tell where the trend is heading in the future and this brings me to the next topic which is looking at the forces that are pushing the prices up and down and looking at different updates and numbers and see where they're heading. Now, I know there are many, many forces at play at either side, but due to the length of the video, I just want to pick out the two major ones, in my opinion, that are affecting the price right now. So let's talk about what are the forces pushing the prices up at the moment. And number one is all time low mortgage rate. So as you probably have seen before, Bank of Canada just announced that they're not going to be looking to change the interest rate, at least for the next three years. So what the Bank of Canada have been doing is for the last couple of months, they have been buying a massive amount of something called the Canada mortgage bonds. Now, I might make a separate video to go really in detail what they're doing with this. But long story short, what they're basically doing is buying all these bundle up mortgages from the banks in order to keep the mortgage rate extremely low. Since last year, when there is a real estate slowdown in 2019, uh, Bank of Canada have bought several millions of these CMB already. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, Bank of Canada have bought hundreds of millions of these CMBs every single week. Yeah. This has led to two things. Number one is now buyers are a lot more confident to come out and start seeking properties because they know the cost is not going to jump at least for the next three years. And number two, this allows banks to approve you for a much bigger mortgage amount, letting you have a bigger range of choices when it comes to house affordability. Now on a side note, I just want to remind you that this is an extremely dangerous thinking and you should not be trying to apply for the maximum you can approve for, especially during a low interest period. The reason why is when bank calculate how much mortgage you can borrow, they look at your monthly payment cost and it's usually going to be about 40% of your gross income. Now, if you borrow to 40% max, then you still have to pay tax, which is about 30% in Canada leaving you with only 30% of your gross income for everything else. So you're likely not going to have any savings left every month. And that's very dangerous. And also, eventually, rates will increase. If that increase, your mortgage payment also increase. And if your salary have not increased by then, you will really run into trouble. So as a side note, make sure you don't borrow to the maximum that banks will give you. That's what you can qualify for, but that's not what you can afford. Now, the second force to look at is the pent up demand and the low supply. So if you look at stats on different websites, they will be telling you that inventory are at all time low for the last four months. And partly is because of COVID-19, they may not want to show other people. And another one is maybe sellers are already knowing that the price will not be as high and they're just not even willing to put it on the market to list it. So that in combination of all the pent up demand for the last five months of people unable to see houses have really pushed the house prices very high. And that's why you're seeing a lot of bidding war around popular areas in Vancouver or Toronto. 
Now, next, let's talk about two different forces that are pushing the price down. And number one is, like I said, rental. So if we look at the new July report in rentals.ca, we're seeing that on average across Canada, we're seeing a third month of consecutive drop into average rent. And from year to year, the average rent has dropped almost 10%. Now, there are a couple of factors attributing to this. Uh, number one is many people are considering to move away from city center now that working from home has become the norm and likely it's going to stay like that even if coronavirus has gone because businesses are realizing workers have higher efficiency and they can save office rent, office space if they're working from home. Second factor is that Airbnb are turning back to long-term rental and that's adding tons of inventory to the market so now people have a lot more choice they don't need to pay such a high rent now the second force is the huge amount of supply that will be incoming to the market so as we've seen report before airbnb might add anywhere from 10 percent to almost 30 percent of inventory to the market now a lot of investors is going to try to turn it into a long-term rental first but like i said with rent dropping more and more more people are considering to sell it and that's what we're seeing across canada inventory have been rising very very quickly and as you see on the report on the screen places like toronto are seeing an all-time high in terms of active listings which brings me to this point we know for sure supply is going up very very quickly we can see that from the reports already we need to see whether demand is going to keep at the same high level as right now once all the pent-up demand have been satisfied because if not demand is going to drop with such a big increase in the inventory then we might really see prices move downwards which brings me to the final segment a potential hidden trouble brewing in the real estate market so a lot of people have been sending me information saying that prices have so over asking in their area so that really got me curious whether or not market is really as hot as other people say because one thing you keep in mind real estate tends to lag quite a bit and the sales figure you're looking at july right now is a lagging indicator of activities likely happening in may or june which got me curious about the flip side and that's all the properties being listed right now as active listing that haven't been sold yet i want to see if homeowners are adjusting to a higher price because the market is so hot anyway or they're actually lowering the price because their inventory is not moving as fast as people think now i couldn't find a similar website for toronto maybe there is one and i missed it let me know in the comment below but for bc i was able to find a website called zlt.ca which links with mls which gives me a very nice list of all the listing in mls and have more customized filters that let me see more results and insights so just to give you a quick walkthrough, what I did was went to this website and I asked the website to show me the most recent changes to all the active listings and how much they have changed from the original listing price. Now I found they only show me the first 100 results. So what I did was actually went into the filter and I filtered them into the major six areas in BC and also separate them into houses, townhouses and apartments. So this way it's gonna give me the first 100 results at every single area and in total is going to give me up to 1800 results that's how i can get more data to see what's going on in the market so i copy all the list one by one into excel and i took out some listing that doesn't make sense it's skewing with the data for example this one where they're increasing the listing price by another 20 percent even though it hasn't been sold for the last half years now, before I show you the result, I want to tell you that for this video, I actually spent over three days researching and retyping all the numbers. So if you haven't already, make sure you smash the like button to show me support and let me know that these kind of research actually is helpful. So in the future, I can keep making more of these videos. I put them all into a graph. So from what we can see from these active listings, except from Surrey, every single city's house listing have lowered their price by almost 10%. The townhouse and apartments are at 4% drop across the board. This is consistent from earlier when I said if the market is going to change and correct in price, the first ones to go will be the detached houses. So looking at the other side, this suggests that the market isn't as hot as 
people make out to be, there are still a lot of active listings out there that are decreasing in price because they're not moving their inventory. And this is something that we need to keep in mind as we move forward and observe and assess the real estate market. All right, so I want to close out the video by providing you some closing remarks and some personal thoughts moving forward in the real estate market. First of all, if you're hunting for a house and you want something cheap, I would recommend you going to the active listing like I did and sort by price change at the most recent date. You might be able to find some pretty good deals that way. When I was doing the research, I seen properties that were offering anywhere from 10, 15 to 20% discount from the originally asking price. Another area I would suggest you look into is actually considering pre-sale. Because right now, with how hot the market perceived to be, not many people are considering pre-sale. So you probably have seen pre-sale offering a lot of discount right now. So if you don't mind waiting for a couple of years, you could walk in today to a sales center and probably get some pretty good deals for yourself. Now, if you want to do this, I'll recommend you finding a trustworthy realtor to give you solid advice and also pick developers with a very good track record of completing their projects. Now, the next remark I want to make is about the economy and the real estate market. And I want you to understand that there is a price for every action taken in the market. At the moment, as we can see, government is trying extremely hard to prop up the economy and the housing market during the pandemic. And the harder you try, the more you try to delay, bigger hit is going to come when it happens. There will be consequences. So both sides, if the expectation of the take is too unrealistic, it's going to hinder you from making a well-informed and educated decision. Now, speaking of well-informed educations, I would like to remind you that I have a private Facebook group for like-minded people to get more information, ask questions, and get exclusive contents. So if you'd like to get smarter with money, make sure you click the link below and request to join. I do upload a video every Tuesday, 8.30 EST. So if you like these kind of contents, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to my channel and click that bell button so you get all the video in the future. All right, this has been a long video. Thank you for sticking with me. This is Jackie Cope. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.